Library deal with the meeting of the Lemonster Conservation Commission for February 26, 2019. Um, to start, we have a request for a letter of support by Wendy Weeks, the grant administrator for the City of Lemonster. Hi. So I'm here tonight to ask for a letter of support for the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program, which I have to read because it's a mouthful. So we'll just call it the MVP program. Um, so it's a program through environmental affairs at the state. Um, it's kind of a two-phase thing, which we, uh, you probably are probably familiar with it, but it would allow us to um, get a uh, sort of like a planning grant, which would assess all our vulnerabilities given climate change, whether or not you believe in climate change, something's going on. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of things across the city, culverts, the Medusa Brook situation over there. Um, anything from emergency management, which we've done well in, in dealing with, you know, we're prepared for emergencies, but it um, doesn't hurt to reassess the situation. Once we get the planning grant done, uh, it would uh, give us, we can apply for actually money to repair culverts and, and anything from stormwater across the board whatever the plan comes out with for dealing with emergencies and climate change. So we'd like a letter of support for that. That's the first step to get letters of support from planning, conservation, um, and whatever else we can find. So this program, now I guess, uh, back up, do we have to be, like you, you, you go in as a, do you go in and just say, hey, we want a grant for this, or do we want a grant so, for that, or how does So it's kind of like, so we just went through this with Complete Streets. So what happened with Complete Streets, which is a little bit different, but the same platform, um, we would we got um, um, a planning grant to hire a consultant to do an analysis of our streets. And that creates a priority list for streets, sidewalks, ADA accessibility. So this would be the same thing. So this would look at this our vulnerabilities given climate change and environment, other environmental concerns. So that would give us a priority list and then we would go and apply for grants to address. Okay, so the first step is to hire some sort of consultant yes. to review our yep. things and whatnot. Okay. Commission members, any conversation, comments, questions? Sure. Um, I'd just like to say I've recently been through this process, so I, I know what you're doing up for. <coughs> um, I wholeheartedly support it. And it, if, as you do start going through the MVP process and you're looking volunteers, please keep us in mind as well. Okay. Yeah, we definitely want to be all inclusive. You know, we, with the Complete Streets, we did the highway department and some people in the community who were, you know, in, in the AD, the Disability Commission and all that. So, you know, with this, we definitely center toward, you know, all of you and planning. Anything else? Commission members? Is there a timeline for uh, a little later, obviously. Yeah, I think um, I think it's a situation where we have to have it in by May first, I think, okay. or the money, or when the money runs out. So there's only so much planning money that we can get. So we just want to get it in as soon as possible. As possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, would you like to take a vote on it? Is there any other discussion needed? All right. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion uh, to support the city's um, municipal vulnerability preparedness Why program. Why do <laughs> <laughs> um, Application. Do I have a second? No, I'll second that. All right, all in favor? Okay. Is this letter to be written by us, by our agent? I can draft it. Okay. Yeah, it can just be simple, just we support it, that's all. Yeah. Okay, so I'll leave it up to you to... Yeah. I'm on it already. Work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Very Thank good. You. Thank, Thank you, Wendy. Thanks, Wendy. Moving on to our first hearing, pursuant, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, we have a public hearing to consider a notice of intent by, I don't want to screw up this name. Neroji <laughs> Kuzi. Uh, prepared by Whitman and Bingham for the construction of a single family house with associated site grading, driveway, and utility services to the house. A portion of the work is proposed within a wetland resource area. The project requires a wetland crossing and wetland replication. The address is 138 Old Tavern Road, map 238, lot 1 1. DP file number is 199 1077. Thank you. 
Nicholas, Whitman of Megan Associates. Uh, we're here this evening to represent uh, Mr. Karuki on his project at uh, Old Tavern Road. Um, I'm sure the date's correct, but back in 2008, the uh, Lemster Conservation Commission issued an order of conditions for this project um, under a previous filing. Uh, Mr. Karuki did start work on the project. Uh, there was a couple extensions that were granted through the Permanent Extension Act. Uh, the order um, expired last year, you know, it was October of 2018. Uh, you guys issued an enforcement order uh, for work that was being done on the property after the order had expired. Uh, at the time, uh, the enforcement order, you asked for us to uh, file a new notice of intent such that we can have a conversation what needs to be done on the project site. Um, since the filing, I did have a chance to walk the property with uh, Brad and Angela uh, before some of the snow fell. Uh, so we did get a good chance to walk through there and see some of the areas that uh, I know Brad had some concerns with. I'm not sure if any of the other commission members had a chance to get out there to see the site, but obviously it's, it's in the middle of construction. Uh, has been, you know, nothing's really been stabilized out there with regards to the land cover. It's basically all bare uh, ground out there. Uh, I know uh, since the enforcement order, Mr. Kruke has added some root control barriers as requested. Um, I know some, most of them, I think Angel did get a chance to inspect them and had some conversation back with, back and forth with Mr. Kuruki about the uh, root control devices that were being used out there uh, in a temporary manner, more than a permanent manner, until uh, the commission has a chance to look at the plan that you see here tonight uh, and kind of move forward uh, with the project. I know he does uh, have a contractor lined up now to, to do the site work contacted us and actually he was going to attend the last meeting but he wasn't able to attend tonight's meeting uh, but the coffee said he does have a contractor lined up to do the work uh, site work that we are proposing as part of this so I can go through some of the changes I guess with regards to what's out there uh, so at the time when we had submitted back in 2008 for the uh, order back then the driveway was shown in this location here still crossing in the, in the orange area. We had shown uh, 705 square feet of uh, wetland alteration to accomplish this crossing of the wetlands um, and then get back out to where his house is and the garage is. Um, that work has been completed up until basically the, uh, a dirt uh, sub-base. Uh, but when they did that, the work here appears to have been shifted that way, some toward the abutting property to the north where the wetland alteration, the small section of wetland alteration that occurred uh, that wasn't part of the original filing. And so as part of this uh, filing now with the commission, we do call for that area to be restored uh, back to its original state and then for the grades that we had shown on the plan originally to be uh, brought back to where they were because right now it looks like they, they brought the grade up a little more than it was supposed to be. Uh, and because of that, uh, the, the grade on the side uh, kind of flared out. And there's actually a boulder retaining wall, a half, half boulder retaining wall, and I know we got a chance to see it when we were walking the property. Um, and so as part of that, that would be removed too, to just show that three to one grade um, flaring off the side of the driveway. Uh, the work to the southerly part of that crossing didn't uh, exceed where it was supposed to go. Uh, I know there was a couple of areas that um, before the last, before the the end of the fall when Mr. Kruke put up the, the sill fence, there were a couple areas that it looked like the older uh, road control uh, devices did get breached. And so a couple of those areas that Mr. Kruke did kind of clean up in there. Um, that obviously when it gets going again, we'll have to clean up a couple of those areas that did uh, kind of get into the wetland area uh, shown in the, to the south of that driveway. One of the things that we looked at changing, or Mr. Kruke asked for us to change as part of this, is the location of the entrance off of Old Tavern, Old Tavern Road, where you want more of a straight shot. Before, like I said, you can see where the utilities are. The utilities are in, uh, but that's where the driveway is currently. Um, but he would like it to kind of come straighter to Old Tavern Road as part of the new Old Tavern Park Commission. It's just work within a hydro buffer zone to that. The crossing's not going to change any. The impact of the wetlands isn't going to change any. Just the work within the buffer zone, where a few more trees would have to be cleared to, to construct that uh, that change in the driveway. Part of this, obviously, there are some replication to the wetlands that we are proposing, which you see here in the purple. 
Um, and so we were looking at uh, a little over 2,000 square feet of wet, wet and replication area. Uh, the reason that number is so much bigger than what was being altered is when this filing originally happened, it was done under uh, Mr. Corbacus, uh, who was the owner of this property, I mean, budding property. And so when we were in front of the commission at the time, there was wetland filling on both properties to do crossings for the driveways. And then the replication area for both projects was done in this area because that was at the time the commission felt that was the best place to put it from both projects together because the two filings were done at the same time. Um, and so we still are under, um, you know, I say that it's still the responsibility of Mr. Uh, Kruge to finish that weapon replication to as part of this uh, project to complete that weapon replication. Um, and like I said, we were at uh, 2,135 square feet of weapon replication. And that's why that, that amount is much bigger than the 705 feet of weapon alteration that we showed for the crossing. The biggest thing I think that needs to be done out there, obviously, is in the springtime is to get some grass growing, uh, get some of the slopes to be stabilized. In this area here, where the grading really doesn't have to change, and then change the grading of the crossing and, and shift the deck over and, and move the, the culvert. What happened uh, even before we had done our initial filing with the commission, there was a temporary crossing done to get to the back of the property, and there was a culvert put in here. Well, the culvert extended off to the by a couple feet onto the abutting property to the north. So all along, as part of the proposals that we had for the commission, was to move that culvert to make sure it was on the property of Mr. Kaluki, such that that culvert that was serving for that driveway was always on that property. And so that's still the, the case here, is to still get that culvert uh, shifted, make sure it's on Mr. Kaluki's property as part of this proposal. And then when that's done, we can kind of clean up that, that wetland area uh, that's been disturbed. And it's, it's nothing that we need to uh, remove any trees in that wetland area. <laughs> The growth in there is pretty sparse anyway, so it's nothing that, uh, and even in here, it should be able to clean up without having to disturb any of the, the tree growth uh, or any of the plant growth that needs to be done in there to get the replication area. Um, like I said, the biggest thing is going to get in this area here, you know, loam and seeded. The same with the backyard there, getting that loam and seeded. And then um, if this grading is going to be completed, which is, I know, out of your jurisdiction, we get that completed too. He's going to end up doing that, but that was something that. Uh, some of it's already started to be done, and that's kind of where they stopped in the back there. But it's not causing any issues necessarily to the weapons as of yet. But if it's not stabilized, you know, if it's left bare for a long period of time, we do show the discharge of that permanent drain on this slope in the buffer zone. So that's something that you know still needs to be done too, as part of that that work in the back of the property. But uh, it's, you know, the house is. Well, under construction, the garage hasn't been completed yet, and that's kind of where they stopped. And the site's been kind of, you know, sitting dormant for a while now. Uh, like I say, I know he has uh, contractors for the house lined up and the contractors for the site lined up, and they've been, uh, you know, kind of looking to move forward. Obviously, the site contractor against the weather turns a little in their favor. They've had to get moving out there uh, as long as the commission is comfortable with issuing a new order of conditions. I, just, I didn't look at the whole filing. Is there when was the wetland delineation done? It was done as part of. It was done before. Like I said, this was done in 2008. Was when we when we got the order condition. So yeah. that was the wetland delineation. Well, they, yeah, because things can change in 10 years. So I mean, yeah. It's, and so if you look at the grade out there, when they did the grading, it, it's pretty close. So there's really the wetlands aren't going to creep up the hill because the slopes are so steep. Yeah. And even in here, it, it, if anything, it, it would flare out if they like property, but along here there's a vertical stone wall, so there's no way to really encroach more onto Mr. Kruby's property with that bottom area. And so that's why, we, you know, and even when we walked the property with Brad, it wasn't anything that we saw that I would, uh, kind of the wetland lineage would change you know, drastically. Were you comfortable with it, Brad, or do you recall? Is it something with what specifically? No, wetland delineation, as it, I mean, it, it was a 10-year-old delineation, so, you know, I mean, usually we ask it to be three years old. You know, within the last three yeah, years, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. But because it's a previous final, uh, you know, this is different. But I just want to. So the original, original, is that there? Yeah. Okay. So the original crossing did not disturb wetlands, or or we didn't fill in any wetlands. Is that we did. Thing? No. Except for just that little 
piece up top. So the, the orange was part of the initial filing. What had happened is, like I said, is when uh, Mr. Kruge's contractor at the time came in, he kind of just did his own thing, didn't really, you know, follow the plan somewhat with regards to location, but didn't <coughs> stick anything out and was, you know, left the culvert where it was most, you know, where it was and still is all over the property line and kind of used that as a landmark to work his way to start building the, the driveway right. that was built too far to the north. Okay. Um, and so part of this is to remedy and go back to what the original design is so we can get that culvert off of the abutting property to the north. That culvert was installed even before we got involved, uh, before even Mr. Kravakis, who was the initial applicant on the Notice 10, he even got involved with it, wherever he bought it from. 2000. Yeah, it was even before then. It was okay. Uh, That's, I guess that was my question. So that 12-inch that culvert, that was, it's still there, was installed well even when before, it, yeah. Okay. And I don't know if it was installed when they were doing a lot of the rest of the subdivision and we're trying to get access to the upland. Okay. Uh, so the only thing that you guys are truly disturbing is that little spot up top. To re so really replicate it now at this yeah. point, yeah. yeah. <coughs> With all the rest of the wetland that was supposed to be altered has been altered at this point, which is that orange piece there. So that orange piece is already filled in. And what is the 700 feet, just the, the orange? Just that orange and that little... This, okay, you're going to replicate that in place. Correct. We're going to replicate the place. Correct. <coughs> All right. Even that, it's, it's yeah. such a small area. It's yeah. Why did, to me, it didn't sound right at 700 feet. I'm like, that's not 700 square feet. Right. Yeah, so. Right. Um, so where's the, the current wetland is what you show there? Not in purple, because that's the replication. The blue line here is the, the wetland. <coughs> And the purple is what you're going to replicate. Purple here is going to be replicated. Yeah. That's part of that seven hundred and plus the little area up here is going to be yeah. cleaned up and replicated once they fix that color and the rest of that driveway. Right. I just have one kind of yeah. comment. Um, because the wetland was already disturbed, but uh, the replication hasn't started, yeah. I'd like to see the replication start right away. I mean, we, I, you know, I. It, we don't, I don't want to see the house get built, you know, and then the wetland replication, yeah. not even, because we want to see three growing seasons. Yeah. So we want to get that, you know, this that, yeah. No, that's what I, yeah, what I agree with that issue. And that's what, again, because it's under a new filing, you have a chance to put whatever conditions you want on it, such that Mr. Kruke has the following to the T. And there's a, you know, obviously because of what's been going on before, you can kind of, Kind of angel to kind of watch for this whole thing. Yeah. Early to make sure that he's doing it in the sequence that he wanted to be done. Okay. I mean, I know we've done that on some other projects, but I don't. I mean, I don't want to stop him from building his house, but I want him. I'd like there be some mechanism that 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 is something that gets done. Well, I, know, right right away. No, know. I think it makes sense once the ground you know falls out. Yeah. Here, I think it can be done. For I mean, I, I haven't been to the site, but you know, I would imagine you can continue to work on the house. Yeah, the, the house, the house guy can do that, it's like I can do the you know, replication. Yeah. You know, yeah. One which would be yeah. Well, I know in some times we say the, weapon, the replication takes place before like a certain portion of the project, but yeah. I mean, you already have a house in progress, so you can't even right. do that in this case. I mean, we could, we could, I would think we could tie a date to the replication, you know, yeah. by July okay. 1st or yeah. to, to, something right. like that. Say what do you think? Unfortunately, I didn't get out there. So. Uh, a few questions. Sure. Um, just clarify for me, please, the amount of work that was actually done on the abutters' property to the north. There, you mentioned the culvert extends onto the property. So there's a it's tough to see the culvert on because it's such a small thing. But that remember, I don't remember the remember how they kind of built that half half a canyon wall there. Yeah. It was basically right on the property line. It, Kind of the best we could determine it was right on that property line. And they basically took the end of that culvert and then worked their way back. And so when they did that, it looked like there was a little bit of um, erosion that got off the abutting property. So the encroachment's only a foot here we take? Uh, well, maybe a few, four, four, maybe five or six feet of erosion. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, there was some, some erosion that was on the other side of that yep. retaining wall. And that's really on the abutting property. And so it's erosion that kind of got onto the, the abutting property because they were building basically right up to that property line. 
and that's part of his plan. He's going to remediate the erosion on their property correct. as well. Correct, correct, yes. Yeah. And then um, just let's get back to the history of the wetland replication area that's taken place on the lot to the south. Was that originally filed as a co-owner? Is that how that came to be? Or? So the property owner for, I believe it was 17B and 18B, or this, it was the same, it was mm -hmm. Mr. Craig. And so when we filed with the commission, uh, we had some wetland filling that had to happen for his driveway also. And so because he owned both of them, the wetland replication was shown here because that was thought to be the best place because it was a little more shallow than the slope that we had adjacent to the wetland down there. Um, and so that's why that area is so much bigger than really this, but it, it, it made up for some of the loss with this lot there too. Is that lot and that owner part of this application? It is not now. Okay, so we can't really um, enforce the replication on that property then. Okay. So you would either need to show it entirely on this lot. No, and that's a way I, I can I can adjust the line to make sure it's all going to be approved as well. Okay. Then we'll keep the area to make sure it's more than what the original uh, filling was. And that, like I said, that was the intent there was to make sure that we had more than one to one replication of filling that originally happened. So you're proposing 20, as you say, 20, 2135. 2135. And I think we were at like 19 and change, I think, originally between the two of them. And I can double check that file too. Um, but we can make the, the replication area where it said that we're greater than one to one between the two of them. And I can show you that original file too. I, can, I have that uh, original notice in the file at the office. Okay, and then. Um, the grading, the grading in the back of the house there. Yep. Um, I know you mentioned it's not within our jurisdiction, but this type of construction has a tendency to quickly become within our Correct. jurisdiction. And I, and so I know one of the notes I had down, and like maybe I'll beat you to the punch here, is erosion control blankets on that slope. So I didn't add it to the, because I remember that when we had the site walk, we were supposed to have a meeting like a week after that site walk. Um, and so I didn't revise the plan since the site walk. I want to revise the plan all at once and familiar with the commission other other commission members have any comments that we want to make any revisions to it. So I can add that to what I know you made mention during the sidewalk about putting road control blankets on that slope or any other uh, I guess acceptable means to to get that thing to be stabilized as quickly as possible. Right, and just a, a detail of what you're proposing there. Yep. And then I would ask you too to consider um, just talk with your client and consider how much of that grading is absolutely necessary. When you do walk behind that house, there is a pretty decent yard before you start going up there. No, and that's so, uh, I'll, I'll double check with him to see how much more he wants to do. Because I think right now, I think if he leaves it and just stabilizes what's there, I think it might be not right. what. Because I think the intent of what he was trying to do is see if he had enough room really to put a pool in there in the future uh, to keep his options open. But I think, like I said, yeah, I think there is one Intuitively, it seems back. like there's room for that now, so. I think so, right, exactly. Yeah. I think you're right, too. Yeah. And then the, the realigning of the driveway. Yep. Um, what was the reason for that again? Uh, I believe it was just preference for the client to know. So this way came out 90 degrees to the, the road instead of coming out at an angle so you could see uh, a little clearer, right? You know, and that's, it was a request that he had that when we updated the plan for the commission, that we could show the driveway coming out at 90 degrees to the street. Okay, my, my only concern there is if something wasn't broke, why try to fix it, knowing the history we've had with this lot. So, yeah, so I would I would ask you to uh, reconsider that one with your client too. Okay. Um, you know, it is just buffer zone work. It's something you could approve, but it doesn't. It didn't look to me like there was a sight distance issue or anything else that yeah. might have been driving that. So. Yep. Yeah, no, <clears throat> And then I just, you know, I agree with um, Larry that replication should be done this spring growing season. The fill's already happened. Where, where was the original proposed driveway? The right, you know, okay. <coughs> and the clearing's been done there, right? The oh, yeah, that's where the driveway is now. Yeah. 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 Members, comments, questions. Only 
the comment I was asked to make um, was that there has been a soft work order on this property since 2017. Uh, <clears throat> I have a copy of a letter from the building department as well. They just wanted me to bring that to the commission's attention. Okay. Can we ask what that was for? Was um, it building and inspection related? Yes, they were doing a status check requested by a subcontractor. Um, do you want me to go into the whole letter? No, okay. just <laughs> well, I wasn't sure if it was site related, building related. There was multiple um, issues. Okay. That were, you know, they decided to issue a soft work order completely, and they just wanted the commission to be aware. Could we make it a condition that they have to have all their permitting and, and approvals and everything? That is a general yeah. condition. Okay. I can reiterate it in the letter. To yeah, I mean, even well. if we made it, a I know even if it's in there, we can make it a condition that yeah, they have to provide special. a copy of the you know, all, yeah. all the permits. Yeah. 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 I mean, anything we can do to help, you know. something before we have a vote? Or do you absolutely need Okay, I think we're getting enough feedback tonight that okay. you know, some things you yeah, uh, agree on, change on the plan, and then you have to talk to your client over Yeah, that's right. Like, well, you said the next meeting is a couple weeks, right? 12. March 12. March 12. March 12. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, anybody in the audience like to speak on this notice of intent? Second time and third time. All right. Um, I'm assuming you would like a continuance. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, continue for the Until March, March 12th meeting. meeting. I will leave the public hearing open. Um, any other comments or questions you'd like to have? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. hearing uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended to be a public meeting to consider a notice of intent for the City of Lemonster for the replacement of existing metal corrugated culvert with a concrete culvert box on Litchfield Street address 525 Litchfield Street, map 436 and 239, lots 1 and lots 4. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Matt Lundstedt, I'm with Comprehensive Environmental, uh, here on the behalf of DPW, uh, mostly here on the sidewalk. Uh, what we're proposing to do is, uh, a little background, the city got a small bridge program grant from MassDOT uh, to replace a uh, failing culvert on Litchfield Street. So the existing is a nine by six arch, which is rusting and distorted so they're concerned about losing it um, we're proposing to replace it with a 15 by 9 box culvert we're daylighting about 40 feet of stream upstream and downstream means we're making the crossing a little shorter um, in terms of wetland impacts it's really just temporary uh, to remove that existing culvert and then construct the new culvert um, we'll be doing some water diversions, um, which is, is shown on the plans. We plan on just damming it up and pumping around or piping around, depending on what the contractor wants to do. Um, there were some, do you want me to go, there were some questions at the site walk. Do you want me to go over those? Or? Yeah, you could, yeah. So there was one concern, of, somebody mentioned the butters had a concern about downstream flooding. Um, we, uh, we, we modeled this hydraulically for the existing and the proposed, and at the furthest downstream cross-section, which is about 250 feet <coughs> downstream, um, in the existing and proposed, the 100-year uh, water surface elevation does not change. So the biggest change is upstream, as you can imagine, there's two brooks coming together there and then going through that culvert. So, in the larger storms that water builds up behind there and kind of the culvert just lets out what it can let out 
uh, in our proposed condition where we're improving the hydraulics, uh, that water will get through a little sooner. Uh, and by the time it gets to that downstream point, any uh, change in the opening is mitigated. So it doesn't, uh, and we used, um, in that modeling, we used the latest um, precipitation numbers, with, when they want to call it climate change or climate increase or whatever, it's, uh, we used uh, Atlas 14 from NOAA for those numbers. So it is as good as you can get um, to that point. Um, uh, as I mentioned, upstream is Wilder Brook and Fall Brook. They come together just upstream of this crossing. Uh, in, in terms of meeting stream crossing guidelines, um, we're estimating bankful width of a new crossing would be in the order of 1.2 bankful would be 44 feet span, so that would essentially become a bridge. Um, part of the reason they sought this funding is because of the the city lacks funding to do those kind of things. A bridge would probably be in the millions, and um, you know, besides meeting 1.2 bankful, uh, there would be no other benefit. We're daylighting 40 feet of stream. Um, we do maintain we have an openness ratio that meets the stream crossing guidelines, and we'll be able to provide a natural substrate throughout. The, uh, the proposed culvert, which doesn't exist at this point. It's a metal bottom and the, the water kind of shoots through there like a flume. Um, I think that, I think those were all the questions that came up, unless, unless you guys can remember. Uh, it's designed, the design storm is 25 year, uh, which can pass through the culvert without overtopping, and then the 1500 will still build up a little. Currently, it's handling about between the five and 10 year, so before it backs up. Any commission members, questions? Do the thanks. Yeah, I can put up. Which, uh, which sheet would you want to see? Yeah, I don't really have to. Here, I have a. Oh, yeah, we do this. So 11 by 17. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got my good glasses on today. Yeah, I was like, you really like the big one. some of those trees are going to come down. I know there were some that were actually on top of the culvert that seemed like they were actually undermining the culvert itself. I'm right. assuming that. So, as you can imagine, to get at that culvert, we're basically going to cut, we're going to have to cut all the way through. Yeah. It's going to be a pretty big cut. We're going to have to close Litchfield Street and detour it. So the trees within those limits will be, will be lost to whatever, I mean, the contractor will save whatever he can. We'll try and, you know, as many mature trees as we can without, you know, endangering safety. I think on, because we're shortening, I think towards the end of the existing culvert, the cut won't be too bad uh, because we're pulling in on each end. So right around that location where that existing kind of chamfered end was, we'll be able to save some of those bigger okay. trees so forth. But it seemed like even some of those big ones shouldn't have been there only because you could see the roots were sort of negatively. Yeah, know, right. Branching right. down through, you know. Yeah, yeah. Those, the, and the metal covers, um, as, the, as the flow line fluctuates, that's where you get the, the worst rust. And then you can see it just started to form and under the load of all that embankment. Yeah. Um, and then pulls open up and the roots get into the water. So. But yeah, it would be good if we could keep some of the larger ones at the end. I think that would definitely. Sure.
it's the uh, spec on the stream bed materials that you're closing with? So we did pebble counts. Um, the, I, don't, I don't remember if we put the actual spec in there. So we'll have a design substrate. What, what we actually like to do is when we excavate, we'll save some of the material that's under the existing culvert. Presumably that was, you know, when they, when they built the culvert, they, you know, they went into a stream, put the culvert in, and it backfilled. Um, so we'll look at that material, saving that actual material that's out there as part of the substrate, and anything we need to augment will base on our pebble counts. Um, I don't remember if we actually included that in the, the plans, um, but that will be, that's a specification we'll have to, um, that will include the contract to be required, both to save native material and um, manufacture anything it needs. It'll be rounded. Um, the gradation will be similar uh, to the material we found with the pebble counts. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a pretty tough spec to me. It's, you just can't use processed gravel from, you know, a, a, a gravel mine. It's got to be bank run. And, um, there's, but there's a few. These projects uh, with the natural substrate um, are becoming more prevalent. So there's actually some, um, some folks who are starting to mine and stockpile that material, particularly out west out in the western part of the state. <coughs> yeah, that, we wouldn't put that on plans. That would be in a uh, stream bed specification. I've seen a lot of these get washed away. Yeah, away. yeah, I know. So we will, we, we, so, that's that's one of the things with the stream crossing guidelines that that this this material we'll put in the substrate is actually designed to match what's out in the stream so that if it moves whatever's moving in the stream in the bigger storms move in and takes its place that's one of the intents of the substrate and these the stream crossing guidelines has not become a barrier to sediment transport so we'll size that accordingly and that, you know if, if, in this this particular stream is actually kind of small cobbly, there weren't a lot of large cobbles. There, there is a kind of spillway at the inlet to the culvert that we think was, <coughs> it's angular riprap type stone, so we, we don't believe it's natural. That stuff will be removed actually because we have to encase, that's about where the sewer goes under. We have to encase that sewer, um, existing sewer and concrete uh, because of the the structure we're, we're building, we're worried about the integrity, the structural integrity of that pipe after we're done uh, because of the, the height of the retaining walls, wing walls on the upstream side. So we're going to be encasing about 30 feet of that sewer pipe in concrete. Uh, and then we believe that's where the stone is. So that'll be low enough that we can actually redo the stream through there too to match, the, um, match what's out there. There's a access road. Um, is there going to be like a gate or something? Like, what are they? Do you know what they're proposing? Um, well, like I, we get a lot of ATVs and stuff. Yeah, I don't believe it will be improved to the point where it'll be usable. It was more they wanted to show that area um, in case in the future they've got to get down to the end. I think at that time they probably do some kind of emergency situation to, to clear it and get down there. If you if you remember on the upstream side on our sidewalk, there's that access that kind of looks like it begins actually up at the park and goes all the way down, but it's overgrown. Um, it's really just to define that area and make sure they can. Um, okay, but so it's they're not actually it's not going to be cleared as far as I I I don't uh, I don't have an answer for that. They um, they talked about doing that, but um, didn't have us show it on the plans just okay. because they they. It's, it's unnecessary at this point. We just they just wanted to make sure they'd have access if they could, because okay. that downstream side is pretty. You can't go right down. Yeah. They'd have to come, kind of cross country from the other edge of their, the, the property.
When's the project supposed to start? So, uh, yeah, so we have, depending on the outcome here, if the plans are okay, we don't have to change anything. We have one more submission to Mass DOT. Uh, they've already seen it and made comments. It's basically a confirmation set. Uh, and they'll go to uh, they'll go to bid this as soon as we can and be ready for once school's out shutting scheduling the detour. We haven't, they haven't exactly worked out the timing, but the intent is to do it this summer um, with once school's out, so we don't impact buses uh, and get it done as quick as we can. We've got a natural vegetated bank detail. Instead of the wing walls coming out at angles, we turn them flat, on the, at least on the upstream side, so that longer bank can be natural, at least right up to that the face of that wall. Um, that'll act as a retaining wall and retain that slope so we could provide that bench for the sidewalk on that side. Comments? Sure. Um, in terms of resource area impacts, just trying to refresh my memory here for reading the NOI. Mm -hmm. The um, water and land subject to flooding, that was just area, not volume, correct? Correct. You weren't filling, proposing, okay. Correct. speak on this uh, notice of intent second time the third and final time um we okay to vote on this like both public hearing issues with that okay all right I he hasn't issued a file number they have asked in the past that we don't vote on anything until they, they have issued it, it. The no they haven't issued is there an extreme rush on this um two weeks is our next meeting no, as long as if, if, that, if it's just to close Sorry. and because of the, yeah, no, I look too, I didn't see it. I just some, <laughs> some projects, I wouldn't be hesitant to just close it anyway, but when you have this number of resource. Right, area impacts, yeah, I, that's fine. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they yeah, sent it, a bunch of comments. If you don't have substantial comments, you know, about the, these plans, I can get them to Mass DOT. We'd be waiting for a review period anyway for that, and that, that basically wouldn't even be their last chance at it. After we submit to DOT, they confirm that we've made the changes from previous submissions that they were looking for. Uh, and then their final set that, that they need, they have they comment on this set we send them. So the real final set to them can still have changes if they're mm -hmm. EP from PDP. So we can move forward to mass DOT submission and that one shouldn't hold us up. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll wait then. Okay. This point. Um, would you need me to? Would you need someone to be here next? Well, if there's DEP comments. Obviously, we we want to address them. I can communicate with you okay. if it's necessary. Okay. So. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Excellent. So, yeah, we're good. Okay. March 12th, our next meeting. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And this one we can't do anything because of this. Right at the bottom. Right? Yeah. Um. I'm going to move to
to our 620 hearing, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended to be a public hearing for a notice of intent from Mark Horgan, Horgan Construction, for construction of a single family home with the associated landscaping a portion of the work will take place in the 100 foot buffer zone, a bordering vegetated wetland. The right address is 26 Mass Farm Road. But it was, was we can't open it because it wasn't advertised. We okay. Um, so we can't open this because it was filed as 20 Nas Farm. So this will have to be put on to our March 12th meeting. Um, has everything been taken care of up until? The, yeah, everything. It, it will be. Yeah. All taken care of. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that hearing will be continued to our March 12th. Uh, meeting. Uh, our other hearing is pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended to be a public hearing to consider an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation by Matt Morrow Environmental Consulting to evaluate the boundaries of an area subject to Wetlands Protection Act address 200 Tanzio Road, Map 320, Lot 2. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Matt Morrow for the Land Trust, Chairman of the Land Trustee. Um, okay, on July 3rd of last year, um, I was asked to delay a bordering vegetative wetland, which I found over here. Um, I did file the, an the ANRAD on this BBW in the riverfront. However, just to make clear, um, I'd only need certification on the BBW to flag 20 because that's what throws the buffer zone on my client's property. Everything else behind would go throw the buffer zone either up or in that direction, so it's irrelevant to my client's needs. Um, the BBW was actually a pretty straightforward delineation. It was basically on the bottom of a slope. It was either mostly rock or wetland. Um, as you can see, like the the Depths of the slope vary from a minimum of six feet over here, which was very thickly grown in at the time I delineated it in July. It was also very hot that day. Um, it'll go up to about 14 feet, all the way up to about 40 feet. I mean, that's, I, I you guys were down there. Um, that's, that's a big wall. The culvert here coming off the wall. This area here actually is another culvert. You walk this back line, is actually another culvert there. Um, it's basically like a boxed in wetland in that area right here. Now, I did get a DEP number, um, which I don't know if you guys seen it. Yes, no? Oh, okay. uh, I'll give it. I have a copy of okay. it. Essentially, uh, it was issued a file number. The only comment on it was something I actually expected to see was Judy Schmidt was looking for more information on how the riverfront was uh, marked out. Um, and I noticed that the data points that I wanted hadn't been included on the plan. So what had happened was Whitman and Bingham Associates shot the top of high water mark. I went down and verified their shots, and I agreed with their shots. So this area of river is based on an actual survey location. What I'm passing out here for you guys is the actual points. They're translated into elevation, but each point each elevation is a shot point. I sent this when I saw it to Judy Gate. Judy gave me a DEP number of 530. All of a sudden, my email went off. When I read the comments, I sent her the supplemental information immediately. So she does have it, along with an explanation of what had happened here. So. I don't see a north arrow on this plane, so how does this come out? Well, I can have a north arrow put on this plane. Well, just, just give us the right orientation. That's all. Essentially, if you look where I put the hash mark, where it says 349.85, you see a black hash mark I put on each plane. Okay. It essentially goes this way. There's your box culvert at the end here, and it's this section of river that was marked right here. So north would go this way. Brad, north would go this way. So everything was survey located. 
I went down and verified the points myself, made sure that I agreed with them. It was actually done based on the, as the standards would require, the obvious observable break, first break in slope between the wetland and the waterway. I mean, as you guys walked it, I mean, obviously it wasn't anything hard to discern. It was very... Um, I would agree, yeah, and I definitely agree with the wetland line on that side. It was pretty evident. Mm -hmm. I mean, even this area here is pretty much... Hard. Yeah. It started getting interesting when you get out here, but I realized that they didn't need to get into depth out Yeah, I mean, that, that was... I was looking here, and I would have done more work on that side. Yeah, that, that one, as me and Brad kind of walked around, there was some questionable areas in that area, but the, everything else. Well, I would have gone back because I flagged it in mid-July. It was 95 degrees out, and even though the water was flowing through the stream, the wetland itself is actually dry, which okay. kind of surprised me. Okay. So I would have gone back and done more soils work in that area. It's the reason why I didn't do soils over here, because it wasn't really necessary. And this is actually, it's, the BBW is all I'm looking for is here. This black line here is actually the floodplain that's overlaid from the actual FEMA map onto this property. Okay. Has anybody gone out there other than Brad and myself? Has, have you been out to the site at all? Where? I'm not, for this, I've been out here on previous. Oh, no, but okay. So, I mean, I, if, if you're happy with the... I mean, def definitely on this side that we're talking about. Yeah, I would have gone back and done more work on that back side, but I realized as I'm out there, I'm like, you know what, I don't even need that side. So I, I could have, I should have just taken the flags down at that point, but I just left it. I mean, it was, it was close. There was just some things. Sure, know, no, no, totally. The side we're totally talking about, the area I thought was very, um, very, it was there. <laughs> but not much to look at. Yeah. Now, if you guys... Do agree really close to the uh, hearing on this. What I will do, and I can do this within like 24 hours, I can have these points superimposed on this plan. It's not a big deal. It'll take Frank a couple of hours to do. What's this line out here? <clears throat> I drew that in as I was just saying to Brad. And north goes this way. So oh, if you look okay. at the plan, you see north this yeah, way, yeah. this hash line, and this section right. is that okay. section. Right. Right. That's just point of reference. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I drew, I scribbled down in as a point of yeah. reference. In terms of resource areas, Matt, what are you looking for confirmation on again? Bordering vegetated wetland in the riverfront. Okay, so the flood zones are material to you? Flood zones are material. And are you looking at for, for all areas of the property or just just that general area highlighted? This area and you've got a very small area of outer riparian zone here. Is there no wetlands up there? The wetlands, there are BVW, it's way off the property and it's greater than 100 feet. It wouldn't bring the buffers on onto the property. So I considered it a material. Now the 100 and 200, I mean, yeah, the 100 and 200 bearings. This is your 100, this is your 200, this is your 100 foot buffer zone. Okay. And those are based off of these points? It's based off of those points. Yeah. Okay. That was shot by survey and that is correct. confirmed by yourself. Yes. So what about the area over here? We don't even see the resource area on the map. So how are we supposed to confirm? It's way off the property. It's down. It's far Yeah, but if you're telling me, <coughs> don't. I mean, if we're supposed to show where the, the repairing zone is, we would need to see the resource area. Okay, so you're talking in this section of Fallbrook. I mean, it's pretty much like almost a half a mile down the road. That's fine. This is way out here. That's why it's way off the property. They didn't shoot it. But we're being off asked to anyway. determine those. We're, we're asked to. You're asking us to, to determine where the where the repairing zone is. With this. The outer repairing zone on this, not the inner repairing zone, will be off the property. You're talking about a 119 foot linear section. Really, out of this whole property, you're talking 119 foot linear section. And the line on Fallbrook is very obvious. You can look at it right from an aerial photo and come up with the same conclusion just from an aerial photo. Okay. 
Where's the property line, Matt? Um, this is the property line here. It's this square. Oh. It goes up like this and then goes down like this. So it's this area right here is the majority of the property, and you've got this strip that comes here. This part isn't on the property. It wouldn't even count. We're talking just this area of that little bit. Okay. But if we, my thing is if we, if we approve yep. the line here, basically it approves the rest of that too. No, because I only filed on my client's property. I did not file on this. I'm only asking for this. I did not ask for this. I asked for this. And on this area that's on the plan, I'm only asking for 1 through 20. That can be specified on an overhead. Yeah. That I can be more than happy to have that specified, like, very specifically on the overhead. No issue with that whatsoever. And those apply to what, 1 through 20? 1 through 20. Okay. How did you guys get in there, by the way? I'm just curious. I needed to go walk. It was, oh, it was fun, there. wasn't it? <laughs> okay. Can I uh, go again, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Okay. So, a few comments, Matt. Um, I, I do want to see those new you know, high water marks on the plan that you shot here. Absolutely. Like I said, I can get that done in 24 hours. So add add those to it. Also, I'm concerned about the number and sequence on the BBW. If you're looking to tie that down and we're conditioning just a, a certain string there, mm -hmm. it looks like the numbers go up sequentially to number 17 and then they restart again at number 8. So you... you where? I can show you here in mine. Oh, I can. I see it. And we noticed that when we were out in the field. We were very confused at first following the, the number. The number. Yeah. All right, I will have the number and sequence clarified on yeah. the plan. So, yeah, clarify that, please. Mm -hmm. That way, um, if we're making a decision on a delineation, we can specify which flag numbers and you know eliminate all this extra stuff that's shown on the plan. Well, I'll have the flag numbers specified, but, I mean, it would be from the property line to the northerly side of the culvert. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather see. But I will have the yeah. flags and that specified. And then um, getting back to the far northerly portion of that site again, I, I have some more concerns to what Larry does. If if you're showing a riverfront area, I want to see um, those points again from where the, the mean annual water line establishes that. Um, they should be survey point points on the plan, not just something that you guesstimated from an aerial. And no, I didn't guesstimate it from an aerial. I was just making a point that you could see it obviously from an aerial. Okay. They were survey located. I can have like a detail then, sheet with the survey located points and this area isolated specifically. Yeah, show it, right. So show that, you have to show that portion of the survey in this open area part of the plan or something, that's fine. I can do that too, yeah. And then the other question I had is, and um, you know, the, the chair and I didn't walk that particular strip, probably because we didn't think it wasn't going to be important to your project. But the old filing does show BBW on that parcel up in this area. Really? Because I walked that parcel, I didn't see anything that even looked remotely like BBW. And that plan was also done by Whitman. <coughs> Yeah, I walked that area. I didn't even see anything that remotely looked like BBW up there. <coughs> you know, obviously, if there is, I would have to have that put on the plan at a later date. It wouldn't count as part of the certification. Well, that gets back to you know my earlier question of what are you looking for an answer for from us here? Is this do you do you need us to determine riverfront and BBW at this portion of the property? Riverfront. Okay. Just riverfront. Well, if you have BBW here, then that gives you a buffer up beyond it, too. So my, my opinion is if you're looking for a resource area establishment at this part of the property, you should show all of them. Yeah, I, gotta, I didn't see anything that looked remotely like BBW up in that area. Topography-wise, it certainly looks like there could be something. It does. Yeah.
anything there. We'll bring a small section of buffers on here. Where was that? Where was that? Um, I thought it was early 2000s. 2002. 2002. Was that the roadway? Was that when I did the roadway there? I'm trying to think. It's not in the road. It's no, but I mean it wasn't um, the maybe. original filing in the roadway. Or? That was industrial road, yeah. Yeah, I didn't see anything here that even looked for a moment like that. But I mean, I can address that separately. If I could just have a moment, guys. Honestly, I don't think there's any wetlands over there because I did look that area over and I didn't see anything that looked remotely like wetlands to me. Okay. I think it's something that we'll have to, to look at then, just to confirm. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you wanted to add? You well, the only the thing I would still request would be to certify this area under Riverfront. I can add that information and I'll address the BBW under a separate file. If there is BBW there, if there's not, I'm going to have to file a request for a determination to show that there's no wetlands there. So, I mean, I need to do a whole different examination than what this is for here. It's the best access map to this portion of the property. Well, I basically just went up and hiked it out this way, because you, you get up on the tracks and you can walk it very easily. Is there anything? Well, not exactly on the tracks, on the side of the tracks. Is there anything marking out property corners or anything that would orientate you to where you are back there? Um, I did see some property corner markings, yeah. They're not shown on the survey plan. Are they bounds or? They're bounds. Bounds shown here and a bound shown here. There's also um, poles marked as references with guy wires, like large poles, overhead wires, because you get the power line easement going through it. Okay. But I will address that under a separate file. I'll set that up. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right. Can I give you a copy of these? So you'd like them to address this stuff before we come uh, over? Okay. Okay. Yeah. What were the what were the items again? Uh, well, this was what was on the bed. Right. Mm -hmm. Same thing the the earlier, earlier, so show the additional survey for the river. We'll yeah. do a separate part of it. Incorrect uh, yeah. flagging. Right. Okay. I remember when we were out there, you had a question about this. Does this information help with that? No, I said nothing. You all said there. Okay. 
So there's been no clearing, no, no anything? Clearing. No clearing. Okay. Their floodplain permit as well as their special permit has expired for the site, so there's no work happening at this time. Okay. Have their original filings if anyone wanted to view them. I think I also had uploaded them online. Do you, do you have a um, hard copy of the, the I guess it's a iPad chance to do G207? It shows pretty much the entire subdivision. You're lucky. <laughs> uh, they made any mention of like work being started in the spring or? Uh, yeah, so um, I know that they're optimistic that construction should start in the springtime, uh, just to work out for timing and funding the last three years, but yeah, in the springtime, so they should be happening. And so sometimes we give three-year extensions after three-year extensions after three-year extensions. Right. So s sometimes it's better to give a one-year extension, and that way it keeps everything fresh. Keeps, but I mean, if they're going to start, it, it, it's just... You know, and then what, sometimes, you know, things get forgotten or, you know, Correct. it falls off the radar and... I mean, I specifically know. remember this site walk and I remember all the different sites and stuff like that, but three years from now, this whole yeah. <laughs> ball game, so... Um, so their plan is to start construction yes, this construction right. season? Yes. Okay. Now what about their other permits? Other permits? Um, they are before, they're going before the planning board in the next month or so? I believe so. I know that um, they just uh, reapplied for a special permit for the uh, flood plan. Okay. And the subdivision? This yeah. open space subdivision? Yeah, I want to look to you uh, <coughs> on that. And those currently with going to Those are going through the process currently. Okay. That's not available. So they couldn't obviously move forward until those are in place, anyways. Sure. Um, are you familiar with these plans? Um, I'm um, familiar with Alpha uh, rates. I haven't done a lot of work with the project yet. Okay. Are you, are you familiar with the um, the shown in the floodplain and the compensatory storage caps that we're doing? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Um, the roadway itself. Do you know if that at the completion of the project, if that's going to remain? Private under the homeowners association, or if that's going to become a public road? I don't, but I'd be happy to check. Okay. So I have um, concerns about the the filling in the floodplain. I I don't agree with the numbers that are shown here. I'd like some more clarification on that. It looks like the filling that's been done within the floodplain is not meeting compensatory storage area at like elevations. So if you fill between elevation 100, 101, you've got to at least cut the same amount of fill with those same elevations. It looks like they're taking credit for um, at different grades, which you, you wouldn't be entitled to. And <clears throat> the other concern I have is the, the proposed floodplain compensatory area that's shown as hatched up on, I guess it's parcel three, can't really read that number, start, but it, um, that area on the low end kind of terminates between what's shown as grade 474 and 473, yet the, the cuts are shown going down to 473, so I'm concerned that Somehow within the calcs, maybe in that particular area, you're taking credit for a tenth or two or three tenths more than what you'd be entitled to there. So I, I would need to see a little bit more information on um, the floodplain work before I really want to consider extending these. It may just be some clarification, or it, it, you know, it may need some minor plan revision to um, show that that's going to meet the performance standards. When do these expire? What's the expiration date on this? 
2019. Right, and the chart, the chart that's being shown on this plan sheet 207 is really not shown as what I would typically see as the industry standard. I mean, it should be showing what the volume is for the fill at elevation. For instance, they start at 473 and go up to 475. So you show a volume of the fill at 473 to 474. You show a volume of the fill at 474 to 475. It's showing um, some volumes and then the cumulative, I'm not sure how some of those are being added up. It's a little unclear to me there, but when I look at the like elevations and compare that to the to the cuts, they're not they're not um, they're shy on on a few of them and meeting the performance standards. But so just just some clarification sure. on all of that, yeah. and hopefully if that can be wrapped up in two weeks. Can I just look at that one If you could get it to our agent ahead of time, and that way we can look at it before we need it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll talk about it. take more than a year if they just start a subdivision this size, but I just want to, re I agree with Larry that three years has been a long time just to remember the site, you know, so, okay. Yeah, if you could have that done for our next March 12th meeting, I think we should be able to, uh, as long as it meets Mr. Stone's uh, standards, I think we, we should be all set. For any other projects? I don't believe so. Okay. <laughs> Do we have any new communications? Not the same. No? Okay. Meeting minutes. Does everybody please go back? <laughs> uh, I don't believe we can vote on November 13th. Meeting minutes. Someone was absent for that. Correct. Um, for the December 12th, 2018 meeting. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> but we can vote on January 8th meetings. Okay. January 8th. Does Mr. Colombo have that meeting? Always the L. Okay. Um, I have reviewed them all. Has anybody had a chance to review them all? Any issues or comments on them? Okay. So do I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes for uh, January 8th, 2019? Make a motion to approve the minutes for January 8th, 2019. Uh, second. Second. All in favor? All right. New business. Policy sent out for review before review. That was a long time ago, and I actually read them all, and I agree with them a lot. And unfortunately, I forgot to bring if I had any comments to them. So, um, I think it's a really good idea. Um, I remember having this discussion back. Unfortunately, I may agree with Mr. Stone when he said, you know, we can tell them all we can, but are they actually going to read it, or are they going to do whatever? But I, I do like 
<coughs> kind of the structure you put into those about, you know, how a meeting goes and what to expect and what, you know. So I, I would definitely be in favor of all of those things. Um, but I should have brought, because I think I had a couple comments that were minor, but I was really pretty happy with um, policies written as, as they were. Thanks, Matt. Can I just give you one more piece of information before I take off? Sure. On uh, Mr. Zani's issue, yes. I heard from Kate Jarvis from the USDA this afternoon. Um, she is actually still probably banging the last of that report out as we speak. Okay. Um, I'm expecting anything from her any time now. Okay. I mean, between her coming down with appendicitis and then the government shutdown, I just, it's like I felt like I was cursed. But, I mean. <laughs> Why, is she working for the government? Yeah. She's, you know, she's a federal employee. Oh, uh, okay. That's who writes these plans is, is federal. She didn't actually stop with the government shutdown, but some of her co-workers were affected, so it like doubled the remaining workload for the remaining employees. Okay. So, anyway, I just want to let you guys know that. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Morrow. Um, did anybody ever else have a chance to read the policies that were written? They were kind of like outlined. I don't know if anybody had any comments or questions. So. Plastic and the amount of plans I get so I don't have file folders like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I read them all, but it's been a little while since I thought about it. I do want to make some comments at it about it, so I can yeah. maybe keep it on there. Okay. My, my only concern with um, when you're doing policy is there were a lot of good things in there, but sometimes <clears throat> when you write something, there are things that um, aren't happening in a typical filing or a typical process before this commission, and if you don't spell that out, sometimes people think, well, you didn't tell me here's your policy, mm -hmm. this kind of... So I just want to avoid something like that, people thinking that, you know, here's the language, this is all that could ever possibly happen kind of thing. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's to some extent, you, you, you certainly want to educate the homeowner about the process. Um, maybe having something written helps out, but at the same time, I kind of feel like you're trying to educate the homeowner about how to design a home or how to do something else that you really need an expert to do. So if somebody's got that professional working for them, you don't necessarily have to spell everything out. So I'm just trying to avoid any future, let's say, confrontations because <laughs> something wasn't in a policy and they had a unique scenario or you, you couldn't fit all 10,000 things in the WPA in a policy that you might run into. So I just want to think about um, that a little bit more and, and you know, either add or take some things out just in yeah, case. Yeah, I, 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 maybe I reviewed them more as a guideline than a right. policy. I right. think so that, that I might have, have been my okay, difference. Right. <laughs> That's what I was going to say, like we rename it to like guideline, absolutely. You know, so. Um, and then it will sound or even like have a disclaimer harsh. at the bottom of it or something just, <laughs> right. so, that, just, saying, like, just, just so that our agent isn't attacked in the future when something doesn't go <laughs> strictly towards how, how it might have been I like to be here's that. the process. Yeah, yeah. I, guess, I guess maybe, yeah, because when I was looking at it, I'm like, hey, this is a good guideline of, of what to expect, yeah. but yeah, I guess if you look at it, it's... doesn't take the burden off you. Yeah, and yeah, I, 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 didn't, the I didn't look at it that way. Maybe I should have. I looked at more as. You haven't been assaulted as much as I have been. <laughs> well, that, that's probably that's what I'm saying. I'm not a governor employee other than in this. So, you know, I just like yeah, I looked at it as a guideline. So I'm like, hey, this is actually a, a pretty good thing. So, yeah. So please leave that on there. And um, actually, I think mine are out in my truck, but I probably like to read you <laughs> again. Yeah, I mean, clearly you put a lot into it. So thank you. Let's yeah. Just mm -hmm. I think that's helpful for you. Yeah. Uh, Lastly, leak field transfer of custody to the rec department. Yes. <laughs> so I have spent quite a lot of time working with KP Law, um, the Lassie League, the rec department, doing title searches, deed searches to find out where and why this land came into our ownership. <coughs> um, the parcel of land was taken by tax because of tax tax owing. Um, so they took it for taxes. And the fields were built in 1962, I believe. Um, and just recently, you know, recently I think like Joanne had oversight of the fields when they were putting the lighting in, and then it just kind of bounced back and forth between the Rec Department and Conservation Department because there was a miscon misconception that due to the vernal pool um, towards the back of the property and the trails and the conservation of the Buzz Mass um, Audubon's property that it was restricted in conservation. Um, I had to 
to do intensive research back to the 1930s. Um, there was no conservation restriction, there's no dedication of conservation restriction. So I'm working on the petition um, to bring the Forest City Council to have the care and custody transferred over to the rec department because that's what will, in the long run, completely benefit the last city <coughs> and the city of Lemons there because they'll qualify for grants and they'll be able to do more work on the fields. Um, I just wanted to know if I had the Conservation Commission support in that. I didn't you know, write up a support letter for you guys to sign and I can submit with a petition that you guys support this action. Is she and I, because she's been on here a long time. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's been a thorn in our side for a long time because, and it makes it difficult for the Lassie League because they can't do anything without coming to us first to put in, like, a light pole. Right. And it's like, you don't need to come to us to put in a light pole, but technically... They had to come the, to us because they wanted to no parking for a safety issue yeah. on their property, so, yeah, I, you know. Yeah. I think this will really benefit them and the community. I mean, if we can get together, uh, like, a map that shows the resource area, you know, yeah. I know there's a defined berm, and you have to kind of go up over the berm and into the woods to get to the resource area because it kind of goes up and down, and it sits kind of in that that low-lying area. I mean, if we can just have something that just that shows where that area is to make sure that right. you know they don't decide you know later on to put, put a field, field over there, you know, yeah. drain. Well, I made sure that the rec department is very aware of it, and I've added yeah. it into the file, and I can add it to the I can see if we add it to the lease agreement as well to be conscious. Yeah, just. Just, it's far enough away. I mean, you know, Dave, yeah. we've never had a situation yeah. where that's been a problem, but at least so they're aware of it. Yeah. But I think it's a, a good move. Yeah, I think so too. Absolutely. So you'll draft all that and get that yeah. to us so we can measure um, it. It sort of ties to this, so I would someone have to discuss it at a later time, but um, the, with a little, um, field we were just at to look do the, the, the site walk with the softball field the football field oh is it with the oh, uh, with the yeah field. 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 yeah um that's a similar one that's yeah. technically under conservation is it and uh, you know yeah. what does that look off no. i'm not even sure yeah, yeah. but anyway yeah. it's a, a similar thing um and we, we kind of go back and forth yeah and that's another one where i can add it to my winter list yeah. And there's a, a few things about that that have come up in the past um, with them charging to access city property. The actual permit that they, they operate under was like a 90 year, right. 99 year permit that allows them to sell tobacco. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a really antiquated, like it, it's a very strange um, agreement. I mean, if, if conservation is any, isn't even part of any decision there, everything is totally done right. by um, the rec department, so we're not even involved in, you know, the, the leases or the, the use of the property. So that might be another one. That I believe I'm thinking of with that because I have walked the site with you. The reason that that was under conservation was because of the riverfront area and the wetlands there. They have had issues in the past where I think you brought the as well that they were pushed, kind of accidentally pushing snow over and debris over and having it under the conservation purview kind of protected it better, they felt. Um, but I can just, I'm at call as my list of things to do. I can do that without an ownership. Yeah. So, yeah. A wetland's a wetland. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> so the matter of owns it, we can protect it. Yeah. I know, but I think that was just like their thought process on that. Yeah. Was. Because I think they came to us when they wanted to put in that splash park. You know, and it's like, it's not a conservation issue, but it's, so. Yeah. Maybe we can even you know, just divide the area off. Yeah. I can look into that when we have some time. Okay. Perfect. Um, I'll say a free time. <laughs> we get one longer <laughs> list. <laughs> we'll just keep filling it up. Um, it's not Brook. That's still in funding. Yes. Has anything happened? Is it just literally just? Um, we had the, you know, an update meeting on it, but unfortunately they're still trying to find the funding. Okay. Keep us posted. Mm -hmm. uh, enforcements. One. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we can go to uh, lot two, uh, 12 dash two Royal Oaks Way. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, Miri Dipito, Three Oaks Environmental, and uh, represent uh, the folks over at Royal Oaks Way. They've changed uh, 
site uh, foreman, if you want to call it that. Uh, it was Brian Campanelli. He's moved on to another site and has left uh, Jay Klinsky or something like that. Um, who was very responsive. I met him at the site a couple of days ago, and it, he said, "Show me, show me what you know what needs to be done here and what the concerns are." We went through your list, and uh, I, I wrote a little note to you. Yeah, I, I received down. it. Um, okay basically going down different items and I mean, keeping an eye on it because underneath all that snow and ice, it's all frozen solid, that once spring comes and that first inch is defrosted and it'll start moving in the rain. So I'm gonna keep a really close eye on it, make sure it's not migrating through the erosion controls. Once everything's all defrosted out there, we'll be cleaning out the two the wetland areas that have uh, turbidity sediment that's stuck to the leaves. It, it's pretty visible, but it's not moving at the, at the current time. So if you have any questions at this point. I've brought all five reports that I made. I didn't know if you... I, I have been sharing them with them. Okay. I brought them just in case. I may need copies of all of them. Um, excuse me. <laughs> you want to take them the file, huh? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
if they're needed for some other purpose, I think they. Yeah. No, I, I would think you should be able to. You know, and if someone needs to actually review his letter, they can look at. That's it. You can go look at the video itself. You know what I mean? To confirm that that's what was said. So. Um, 134 Crawford Street in Fitchburg, uh, encroachment to Lemonster is within 100 to a 200 foot riparian zone. That's the, that's the thing that uh, Mr. Morrow was talking about in that whole enforcement deal with the town of Lunenburg. And yes, I don't believe the town of Fitchburg is involved at this time. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but here are some GIS images. Now where is one third? Which one is one thirty four Crawford? It is right near the industrial road. Um, I think it's a solar <coughs> you can see the images right here. It's a weird intersection point on Crawford Street where Lunenburg, Lemonsburg, Fishburg meet. We own um, a part portion of the resource area um, because the MBTA owns a parcel that's in Lemonsburg right there. Um, the amount of encroachment in Lemonsburg is. I don't want to say minute, you know, it's small, it's a small encroachment, it's not a giant from what I can tell. Um, I have, I don't have permission to go on the property from the owner, so I haven't gone on the property. Um, I've seen a look from the road, I haven't seen too much. Um, uh, you mentioned Fitchburg, is, is there something that the site's doing to the south of the road, or? Um, or is that a different project? It's just the site has expanded onto, I think it's the Fitchburg Resource Development. Oh, okay. Homes. So it's in, it's in Lunenburg, but it's the Fitchburg Development Authority. Yes. Gotcha. Right. Now, what is that white? Is that a building? This is a shed, like a little, it's a vehicle shed. Oh, it's so been there be since the 60s. It's been there, oh, like, so. for a very long time. Um, as far as I can tell, it was in the, there in the 60s, and I couldn't go back any farther. Yeah. Um, I talked to uh, the Fitchburg building inspector, Eric, I think his last name. Um, he said that, that that structure has been there since well before the 60s. So, yeah. It's, so, yeah. yeah. Which structure? Just because it's back away from tax zone. <laughs> it's like a very, um, it's yeah. basically just, it looks like it's just like a little roof, but they really store oh. some trucks. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. It's hard to see. They have a lot of fences around, so it's really hard to. Yeah. So where, where, where is the encroachment? That this area is Lemonstein. Right. So this building is actually on, in, in this area. Here. That's what I'm saying. That's pretty. Yeah. It's just, right on just, the line. I that's don't, really all we're looking at is that. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're gonna have to take out if. And when the MBTA issues a no trespass yes. order on them, um, oh, I wasn't sure how the question oh, was. Yeah, uh, Mr. Morrow is very, um, he's been very yeah. communicative yeah. about this project and wanting to issue a joint enforcement, but I wanted to have a commission tell them something that isn't really a major. Right. Well, is it conservation? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what makes this conservation? It's riverfront there. I was going to yeah. say, like... Yeah, it's in the riverfront area. Yeah. It's riverfront alteration. Yeah, From 60 years ago, yeah. like, well, from Belmont. Can I ask you a question? Right? Is, that, is, that, is so it the, the building? No, the about? building's not the issue. There's a small... Uh, oh, that little section of the parking lot? Sorry, Dan. That little... And it's hard to see if it's even impervious or... Yeah, yeah. right. Okay, so it's that. That's what we're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess if other towns are having a problem, I mean, to support them, you know, get our the section in limits to restore it back to what it should be isn't a bad thing. But then again, well, my, my first question is, is how we determine if there's been alteration in limits is it simply the GIS? GIS um, and Mr. Morrow's ver verbal. Okay, but until you see an actual like survey that shows yeah, that it's in Lemonster, it's such a small area that I wouldn't rely on GIS to say, oh, yeah, they're definitely here. And uh, that was my, um, Mr. Morrow was adamant that the GIS town parcel lines are very accurate, um, but I, 
Can I second that? Not necessarily. I second that, right? I mean, clearly, if, if you if you look at the Lunenburg piece, and they're you know quite a distance beyond their property line, it's obvious from an area I'm sure they've trespassed. It's and this isn't the first time this um, has come up. An older woman, Joanne, was here, and it was determined that it wasn't that exact piece, but it was determined that you know it doesn't really affect Lumis. It was a very it was more of a Lunenburg issue. This came up in 2010, and this is a little bit more of an encroachment, um, but. I can't tell if it's sand, I can't tell if it's dirt or soil or gravel that's just kind of flattened out in that area, so I can't really give a good opinion on this. Um, I have no problem you know, requesting a survey. I, I really, I think, I mean, have you haven't talked to anybody on um, Fitchburg Redevelopment Authority or the MBTA, have you? No, I do know that Mr. Roseberry, who was helping me get the GIS um, data from quite a while ago, that he did let the MBTA know. I do know Mr. Morrow has let them know as well, but no one has contacted me or him. You know, that from a restoration view, the easiest way to get that restored is through the trespassing, yeah. rather than wetlands enforcement. <laughs> yeah. Really, I mean, you you came onto my property, you altered it you know, four, five, ten years ago. It doesn't matter. You, you, you can yeah. have that person restore it. Yeah. You know? So ho hopefully that's what the MBTA and the Fitchbury Redevelopment Authority would want. Did you guys want me to attend the Bloomberg meetings? Is that first one um, tell? I'm not it? quite sure which one you said. You said the television. second one, March 2nd. And March 6th is not, and March 20th is. In March 6th, he said the, the attorney for the property owner was there at that one. What was the yes. agenda yeah. on the 20th one? I think it was just the public the, hearing. Uh, yeah. The televised part portion. Because they don't televise all their meetings, I guess. I can confirm with him. Okay, I'm just curious what was different about because you know, could the thing be wrapped up March sixth or like I'm I'm just Yeah, I can confused uh, at what was what was the right. schedule there again. Why there were two two separate meetings set for this. Because some some people will go into the March sixth and some people the attorney was right. March 6th. I couldn't remember who was going to March 20th. I can't remember either. We're going to have to watch this tape. <laughs> <laughs> watch our own meeting to remember what they said. Oh, <laughs> you know? I mean, if we can get a, a survey and just have them put a spike in, you know, run a, drive a piece of rebar in the, in the ground market, then, uh, you're, then you know yeah. for sure. Again, my thought, though, is I don't want to get involved if we don't have to, hopefully. Yeah, I have Hopefully the, the owners can get this resolved. So that's the easier way to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um you can think they'd want to survey their own property at this point, just to clarify. I mean, how do you even access that property without being on their property? Yeah, I'd have you to go through yeah. either I'd have to go through the uh, MBTM. Yeah, which so can't. isn't safe. You need to yeah, have to do that, gentlemen. So, <laughs> CSX has taught me well. Yeah. yeah, they have to shut down the lines and get two people yeah. to bring you out there. And it's kind of a pain. So, 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 so we attend the site walk that. Yeah. So the only so the only thing that we know that potentially jurisdictional is just based off of the GIS and it's a riparian zone is what they're saying. But we don't know that for a fact. Yeah, I don't have. So we don't even know if that has anything to do with us, other than on GIS. Yeah, GIS shows it's jurisdictional, but right. Again, I, I for that small of an area, right. I don't want to take any action until we know. But again, if if we can avoid it and it can be resolved through the owners, yeah, it'd be better. I mean, maybe we can express our concern to the owners. Wait and see what hands out at the, the Lundberg Union, and then, you know, if we have concerns about what happens then, reach out to the property owners, but for that amount of size of an area, that's pretty small. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if Lunenburg is going to require them in the, or the MBTA to do the survey of their property, I think maybe that would that would eliminate us even having to do right. anything, and then we will know what action to take based on that. Right. 
they might look at that and say, oh, we didn't realize that they pull it back and we don't have to get involved. Like, like Brad's saying, I think that. Okay. I'll go to the site watch just so I can see the site yeah, legally. That would be a good idea, yeah. Okay, what else do we have to think about? Uh, any emergency certs? Not this time. Uh, any project updates? How's our city look, Angela? City's looking beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Any NOIs open that we need to be worried about? Any erosion or I know it's not, not construction it's season, but pretty frozen. Um, some minor, you know, erosion to the streets that have been taken care of. Um, over in Sheldon Hill, I noticed they quickly swept it up. It was very minor. Uh, nothing. Okay. Nothing too exciting. Um, I don't have a budget in front of me, so okay. I'm assuming we're still all on. All on board. We're all on board. Do you have an agent's report? I do not. Okay. I do not have a chairman's report or nothing to report at this time. Our next meeting is uh, March 12th with a filing deadline of February 28th. Anything else anybody would like to discuss at this point? No, I declare the meeting adjourned.